Welcome everyone. My name is Heather C. Ancy, and I would like to take a moment to thank you so much for joining us for today's LSVT Global Webinar entitled Big for Life and Loud for Life, Maintenance Classes Following LSVT Treatment of Both Loud and Big. I'm going to be joined today with my co-host and co-colleague, Dr. Angela Halpern, and we will be spending time with you to go over these uh, wonderful classes and to let you know a little bit more about these classes in case you didn't know about them. So first, I'd like to talk to you about some of the disclosures that we do have. All of the LSVT Loud and LSVT Big faculty do have both financial and non-financial relationships with LSVT Global. And the non-financial relationship includes a preference for using both LSVT Loud and LSVT Big as treatment techniques. Financial relationships include that Ms. Halpern is an employee of and Ms. Cianci is a consultant for LSVT Global. And Ms. Cianci and Ms. Halpern both receive lecture honorarium and travel reimbursement from LSVT Global. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what our plan is for today's webinar so you'll have some idea of what you're going to experience. I'm going to talk a little bit about the logistics, about how you're going to be able to answer questions and perhaps receive CEU credits. I'm going to talk then with Angela about the content of this presentation and really kind of get into helping you understand the fundamentals of both LSVT Loud and LSVT Big, and then what you can do to continue the wonderful progress that you've made by using both the Loud for Life and Big for Life courses. Then we'll take some time at the end to address some of your questions. We always like to hear from our audience members to find out a little bit more about what you're doing out there and different ways of which we can help you at LSVT Global. And then at the end, when the webinar concludes, you will have a brief survey. I would ask if you would kindly stay on for a moment or two just to complete that survey. It truly helps us to understand how we are doing as an organization and what we can do to better help you in the future. So again, we'd appreciate you staying on for that. Now information, if you are a clinician who is with us today to self-report the CE activity. These LSVT Global webinars are not state registered, but absolutely can be used for self-reported CEU credits. Now, what will happen is if you would like to receive a certificate of a completion after doing this full hour of the webinar, we ask that you do send us an email at info at lsvtglobal.com, and we will send you out a certificate that will have your name, the date of the webinar, and the number of hours earned. And please do be patient with us. It may take up to 12, or I'm sorry, one to two weeks for this certificate to get to you. The webinar is a full hour in duration, and we ask that your attendance for the full hour um, is required for you to get that certificate. And again, take some time to check with your state licensing boards to determine if your state does accept non-state registered CEUs. So again, although this slide does say that you will automatically receive a certificate, you will not. So if you are a clinician, please do take some time and send us an email and we'll make sure we get that to you. I'd like to take a little bit of time and let you know a little bit about who we are and where we come from. My co-presenter today is Ms. Angela Halpern and Angela is the Chief Clinical Officer of LSVT Loud and she is a research associate with Dr. Ramig's research team at the National Center for Voice and Speech in Denver, Colorado. She has been practicing LSVT Loud since 1997 and has worked extensively as a speech language pathologist in the area of neurogenic disorders and a specialty in Parkinson's disease. And I am Heather Cianzi, I am a physical therapist and I have been certified in LSVT Big since 2007 and also work as faculty for LSVT Big. I work in an outpatient rehabilitation center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania called the Dan Aaron Parkinson's Rehab Center, where I spend most of my time working with individuals who do have Parkinson's disease as well as other movement disorders. So the objectives of this presentation, what we're hoping that you will be able to take from this and perhaps even share with others is we're going to briefly review both LSVT Loud and LSVT Big. And we're gonna talk about the components that are necessary for really achieving that long-term success following your treatment, whether it's with 
PT or OT for LSVT big or with a speech language pathologist for LSVT loud. We want to take some time to discuss the important um, ongoing about keeping on that ongoing practice and the potential tools that are out there that can really assist to help people with Parkinson's continue to keep those gains after they're actually discharged from active physical, occupational, or speech language pathology. And then lastly, we'll describe the elements of both LSVT loud for life and big for life, talking about our group maintenance classes, a little bit about what to expect with them, and then how you can become involved, whether you are a person with Parkinson's disease who wants to attend one of these classes, or whether you actually are a clinician who is certified in LSVT big or in LSVT loud, and you would like to learn about how to lead one of these classes. So we thank you again for your time today. And what I'd like to do with is first open up a poll here. We'd like to know a little bit about the people who are here with us today. And let's take a moment. So poll number one is gonna pop up here and it's gonna ask you who you are and who you are, why you are joining us. So let me go ahead and launch that poll for you. Okay, and you can take some time now here and let us know who you are so that we have an idea of who we're speaking to. Good, we'll give you another moment or two. We're almost hitting that 90% vote. Good, and it looks like, okay, looks like we have most of those people answered. And what we're seeing here now is we actually have um, a high percentage of physical and occupational therapists, 57%. We have a little bit over 30% speech language pathologist, 5% of people who are a family member or friend or a care partner of someone with Parkinson's disease, and 9% is another. Unfortunately, today I'm not seeing any people who are living with Parkinson's disease. So I hope that all of you who are out there attending this now will be um, very successful in sharing this information with those people you know living with Parkinson's. And I think, um, you know, just in case somebody didn't um, actually um, join in here, I actually am gonna launch this poll. Um, if you are somebody with Parkinson's, we do wanna know if you've received LSVT loud or LSVT big. And perhaps if you're a family member, friend, or a care partner of someone, you might be able to answer this for us. So let me go ahead and pull up that poll. So we're asking for folks who are friends, family, care partners, somebody who knows someone living with Parkinson's disease, has anyone ever received LSVT loud or LSVT big? Give a few more moments here for people to go ahead and vote. It seems like right now the majority of people are saying no, that the people that they know living with Parkinson's have not actually received, and we've got 75% of people saying no, and only 25% saying yes. So. We are really happy to have you on so that we have a chance to really talk to you about what LSVT Big for Life and Loud for Life are. All right, so let's move ahead then here to that next slide. So I wanna start with talking about truly what are the fundamentals of both LSVT Loud and LSVT Big? Because if we have a good understanding of that, um, I think that's gonna help you to really be able to understand why it's so important to keep on doing what we're doing and why we can't just stop once therapy starts. So LSVT loud and LSVT big are standardized research-based specific protocols for individuals living with Parkinson's disease. First and foremost, our target is amplitude. And when we talk about amplitude, we're talking about for LSVT loud, the loudness of the voice. So the quality of the voice and projecting that voice so that people can hear you at a level that's comprehensible. And when we're talking about LSVT big, we're talking about amplitude, meaning bigness. So how big we're taking steps, how big we're able to stand up, um, how well we're able to grasp a cup. Um, so we're always thinking about the size of the movement and the size actually of the voice, the loudness of the voice behind all of the movements and speaking that we do. Now the mode, so how do we deliver LSVT loud and LSVT big? Well, it's very intensive and it's high effort. So meaning that 
not only are we working with you in the clinic, but we're also giving you homework. We're also giving you things called carryover assignments where we want you to practice things outside of therapy. And it's intensive in that we don't just keep things as are. Once you hit a certain level, we try to challenge you and make it harder. We push you to go beyond your limits and to really help you to achieve what that full potential is going to be. And then our last is calibration. And what we're talking about when we talk about calibration is generalization, meaning that if you think about your thermostat in your house and you set your thermostat to be 65 degrees, you want it to be very, very cold, but your house still feels like 80 degrees and you're really hot. Now that thermostat is not calibrated. If we set it at 65 degrees, we want to feel a little coolness and we wanna feel what it feels like to be 65 degrees. So we want to help people with Parkinson's disease to be able to feel and sense the ability to realize when they're not moving large enough or when they're not talking loud enough. So we want things to generalize, meaning that we might be working on one thing, but we're also seeing improvement in other parts of a person's life. So people with Parkinson's disease through LSVT Global, through LSVT Loud and LSVT Big, are able to sense when they're not moving or they're not speaking correctly. And then they're able to tap into their internal cueing ability, meaning, okay, now this is what I'm supposed to do. This is how Angela told me I'm supposed to speak, or this is how Heather told me that I need to move when I'm trying to get out of a freeze. And then we're also talking about dealing with the neuropsychological changes that can happen with Parkinson's disease. Um, issues with anxiety, depression, um, the ability to process things gets a little bit slower. So being able to attack all of the issues that come with Parkinson's disease really helps us then through the LSVT Big and LSVT Loud to really make an impactful change in the lives of our patients so that they really do have generalization across how they're feeling, how they're speaking, um, how they're moving, and how they're presenting themselves to other people in their kind of circles of enjoyment, the people that they're being with. So again, we all have one common rehabilitation goal, and that's why me as a physical therapist, and that is why Angela as a speech language pathologist are presenting this together today, because it's not just one or the other. We really do all focus on that target of amplitude, and that means from the time that we're evaluating someone, we're always looking at it through the treatment process for those four weeks that you're with us, and we're really trying to impart into the lives of people with Parkinson's the importance of lifelong practice, because we know that Parkinson's disease is a progressive condition, and we know that things are gonna change over time, and that's why it's so important to tap into therapy early on in the course of the disease, and then to continually have check-ins and tune-ups with your therapist therapist throughout that. So we're really going to talk more about kind of what we do through those two and then how do we take that to the next level when you're actually out of therapy. So when we look at what an individual with Parkinson's is doing when they're in LSVT loud or LSVT big, each treatment is delivered four consecutive days a week for four weeks. So you're looking for 16 sessions of treatment. Um, all of those sessions are individual. So that means it's a full one hour session by a therapist who is certified in that specialty. And that means that um, you are one on one with that speech language pathologist or that PT or OT. It means that the person with Parkinson's isn't by themselves doing exercises and then someone else is being attended to by the therapist and they go back and forth between you. It's really specialized and then you get that focus of that therapist specialty for that full hour. And of course, we start off everything with a very extensive evaluation to understand how you're feeling, how you're moving, how you're speaking, um, how you're handling your medications, and really kind of getting to know you as a person. And then during the course of that full month that you're with us, we are giving you daily homework practice. So we give you practice homework, not only on the days that you're not with us, but also on the days that people are without us, because we want to make sure that you're having extra practice the days in therapy as well as the days out of therapy. And then we also add in things called those daily carryover exercises. Those are also for that full month um, that someone is with us, meaning that we're trying to give them little things to do outside of the clinic in their everyday life where they can really show off um, what they've learned of how to speak um, with more 
um, clarity and to deliver louder so people can hear them and ways for people to show off their movement where they're walking better, they're standing taller, whatever it is that we feel that we want to help that person be able to attain. And then we really start to establish that level of a lifelong habit of practice. Um, and we often say to our, our patients, at least in my clinic, that you understand that your medication for Parkinson's disease is going to be needed to take every single day. You know that there are certain times of day that you need to take that medication. And we want to think about doing our voice and body exercises just like we take our medication. It's something that's that equally important that people need to recognize needs to be done daily and needs to be done even when the therapist is not with them any longer. So this is the LSVT loud treatment session summary. And of course, these are individualized sessions. So um, there are gonna be different ways to adapt the exercises and activities depending on who that person is and what they particularly want to work on. But there are daily exercises where the speech language pathologist will work with you on holding a sustained vowel phonation. So ah, uh, and then also doing high and low. So again, holding that, but making the ah go high or low. So ah, ah, ah. And you can see that it's multiple repetitions. So there is a lot of practice that goes into that. And then the third part of that are the maximal functional phrases. And basically those are phrases and things that people are already commonly saying where we want to actually go over them multiple times. So in my home, it may be saying to my children, did you walk the dog? Did you take out the garbage? How was school today? So they're phrases that we're already using that we actually get some extra practice in doing. And then the second half of the session moves into what are known as the hierarchy exercises. And that's where we're working on things like structured reading and you're doing that multiple times. And you can see there it's at least a 20 minute plus um, amount of time that you're doing that. Off the cuff conversation where we're able for that speech language pathologist to just have a general conversation with you and, and work in that kind of context. Um, and of course it starts out simple, but it builds up and it becomes more complex over those four weeks of treatment. And then really getting to, well, what is that individual's long-term communication goal? Is it someone who um, needs to just be able to communicate better on the telephone? Is it someone who has a job where they need to teach or they need to give um, presentations? Is it someone who just wants to be able to have better communication with the people that they live with? And like I mentioned before, the homework includes those daily exercises and some of the hierarchy exercises. And then also doing those carryover. So that's again where we are helping you or the speech language pathologist is really helping you to use that loud voice in real life situations. Um, and I know that one of the things that our speech language pathologist often does is she has her patients call her from home and leave a, a message on her voicemail so she can kind of hear how they're doing as well. But it's not taking someone from a very um, you know, challenging position and throwing them kind of right right into that. You start out with simple things. And again, then those carryover assignments are going to actually get more challenging as time goes on. So LSVT Big and LSVT Loud, our overall goals for individuals with Parkinson's disease is really that those people living with Parkinson's disease are really going to start to use those bigger movements and that louder voice more automatically in everyday living. And that we really do um, push them to have long-term carryover so that that increased use of amplitude isn't just staying there in the clinic when they're working with the therapist, that they're also taking it outside, meaning that they're able to remember better, that they're able to say, oh, that's right, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to take that bigger step. Or, you know, when I'm on the phone, I know I'm supposed to really project and make my voice louder. So that it starts to become a little bit more automatic for people. Um, and that is automatically means something different depending on what level of the disease process people are in. If we are working with individuals who are on the younger side or people who are more newly diagnosed with minimal symptoms, we're going to have a little bit more degree of that. For people who are living with Parkinson's disease and are kind of well into um, the middle or maybe later stages of the disease, it may be that automatically means that they're automatically able to respond to someone's reminder 
to take those larger steps or to talk with that louder voice. And again, those are the specifics that that therapist will teach you as well as your care partner and team. So frequently we get asked lots of questions like, well, what do I do after LSVT? You know, I've spent all this time with my in, in therapy, working with this therapist, and I'm doing great, but now I kind of feel like, well, what, what do I do? How will I be able to keep this up? Um, and we have people who kind of are fearful of leaving therapy. And then the other um, kind of end of the, the spectrum that we get, at least in physical and occupational therapy is, is, you know, I'm already doing something. I'm already working out. I'm already boxing. I already go to the gym. I'm doing some dancing. You know, or maybe I'm already in a choir group. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing that. There's no need to continue with my LSVT loud or LSVT big. You know, isn't that just enough? Um, and our answer is no, it actually isn't enough. There is so much that we really do need to do to kind of keep up that quality of life. And what we know in following people for so many years with both LSVT loud and LSVT big is that we really do need to continually have that daily dose of that homework. And that means just like you take your daily medication, we're gonna counsel people with Parkinson's to do their daily LSVT loud exercises, as well as their daily LSVT big exercises. And when you put those things together, that's truly how you get the best combination for success. And I say to my folks when, you know, they're struggling with this a bit, I say, you know, what would happen if we stopped our medicine? And they say, oh gosh, I would feel worse. My symptoms would get worse. And I say to them, you know, this can happen with stopping a program. And I think we all know this. Um, even if you're someone who's living without Parkinson's disease, you know that when you stop an exercise program or you stop being active, you know how hard it is to kind of ramp back up and we all lose some ground. Um, it's much more crucial in individuals with Parkinson's to really keep that going so that we try not to lose the progress we have and that we can possibly slow down the decline that comes with Parkinson's disease. We have to think about, you know, what are optimal wellness models that are out there? How can we think about um, LSVT in that perspective? And I think one of the best ways is to talk to people about the dental model. You know, most individuals don't wait to see the dentist until there's a problem. The dentists have taught us through our lives that it's really important that we come in every six months to see the dentist. So, you know, you never leave your dentist appointment, that one that you had that day, without the next time that you're going to come back. So you go in, you see the dentist, they may um, not have to do anything because you're doing a great job with flossing and brushing your teeth and, and drinking water and doing all those right things. So they may just do preventative care. Or maybe you've slacked a little bit like me. You don't floss as often as you should and maybe you're having too much sugar. So maybe they need to do a little cleaning and maybe they have a cavity to fill. So they're gonna look to restore and improve your oral health. But once you leave them, boom, you're coming back again. And if you want to keep up those healthy teeth and gums, you know what you have to do. You know you have to brush and floss daily. So why are we not thinking about our bodies when we're thinking about the other issues that can happen with people with Parkinson's disease? Why aren't we thinking about that the same way? So we wanna promote that LSVT model of, yes, you have Parkinson's disease, but now you have been referred to see your LSVT loud speech language pathologist or your LSVT big certified physical or occupational therapist. They take a look at you and hey, maybe you're somebody who is very newly diagnosed and you are someone who, who is very young and someone who's not having a lot of problems or you're someone who's been living pretty well with Parkinson's disease. Well, you know what? We want that to be the case and we wanna prevent that functional decline. But you know what, maybe you've already started to have some problems with your voice. Maybe you're having some issues with your gait or your posture or getting dressed or showering. So many things that can be challenging. Well, then those therapists are going to work with you and we're going to try to restore and improve your physical function and your communication. And just like the dental model, when you're done those four weeks of therapy, we want to make sure that we get you back in there no longer than a year. We're looking at three, six to 12 months to get you back in for a tune-up. And then if we want to keep that progress, we've got to promote. You've got to do those LSVT loud or the LSVT big exercises daily. So I think that's a great way if you're a clinician on this webinar to kind of explain to your clients with Parkinson's why it's just so fundamental to keep that going and talk to them a little bit about the dental model. So clinically, one of the big challenges that many people living with Parkinson's disease face 
after they're done therapy is really how do they do that? How do I maintain these wonderful effects that I got when I was working in therapy, you know, over time? And then how do I keep exercising? You know, it's hard when you're no longer regularly attending therapy. Sometimes people lose motivation. Um, they lose kind of the excitement of knowing that they're going somewhere and having someone to really challenge them and help them. And then we know that the disease does progress over time. We know that there can be other medical complications. Um, we've had people in the hospital for pneumonia, people going in for the flu, people who have had falls, people with cardiac complications, um, and other things that just kind of, you know, add on to the challenge of having Parkinson's disease. But then you also get people on the other end of the spectrum who say, you know what, I'm doing great. I'm doing really well and I don't need to do this anymore. Like this therapy worked and I'm done with it. And then again, that sensory impairment. So that ability to say, oh, you know what, I'm not moving how I was moving before. You know what, I'm not talking as loud as I once did. Um, you know, I got, it, well, I don't need to do this. So maybe they're not even noticing that they're kind of slipping a little bit. So those um, abilities of internally cueing are still there. They don't go away, but we're teaching people how to keep on top of them. So there's many reasons why people really struggle with this after being in treatment. But we know that that importance of exercise is there. The research really shows us that regular intensive exercise is really recommended for not only improving, function, but also maintaining function. And we see it in the research about how we can improve people's mobility, so meaning transfers, walking, getting in and out of bed, in and out of a car, but also improving balance, strength, endurance, so people can go further, longer, and then also that ability to have more fluidity of movement, feeling more flexible with it. So you have to stop and kind of think to yourself and talk to your patients with Parkinson's, you know, are you getting enough exercise? Um, right now, the recommended dose is really greater than 150 minutes per week. And again, associated with some of the things I talked about before, but also with improving our perception of our quality of life and improving cognition. The other thing is, is that possibility of decreasing the progression of the disease, actually slowing it down. Unfortunately, we know that activity levels for people with Parkinson's disease are actually one third less than people without Parkinson's. And if that isn't enough, we know that even people without Parkinson's disease don't get enough of the regular exercise that they really need. And it says here that upwards of 60% of Americans over the age of 65 don't partake in the recommended daily amount of physical exercise. So we know as clinicians that we're kind of faced with a big task of perhaps taking someone who um, wasn't an exerciser, someone who maybe was an exerciser but sort of stopped, um, and dealing with all of those issues that go into that. You know, how do we motivate people and how do we really strive to keep everyone going? So while I've been talking about how important regular intensive exercise is, it really doesn't replace, again, that daily dose of the LSVT big or the LSVT loud. You really do need both. And we want to talk about, well, why is it specifically so important for people um, to have that LSVT loud or that LSVT big? And we know that not all exercises actually focus on amplitude. So I have a lot of people who will do um, boxing programs. They love the intensity. They love that it gets their heart rate up. They love that they feel like they're really getting a good workout and that they're challenging their balance. But the problem can be is that that's not going to necessarily make someone walk better. It's not going to necessarily make them take larger steps or swing their arms. So the focus on amplitude exercise is really needed every day because the hypokinesia and the bradykinesia, right? We're talking about slowness of movement and smallness of movement. And that's very particular um, and specific to LSVT. Now the mode is intensity. And again, even if people think that they're doing a wonderful exercise program and they could absolutely be doing that. Pilates, they could be doing yoga, they can be doing meditation, they can just be doing nice walking outside. The important is thing is, is that those certain exercises may not be intensive enough and also doesn't apply to everyone's abilities, but also doesn't talk about the specific things about balance, about endurance, strength, complexity. There are so many components that go on into a full exercise program that we really need to address and is beautifully addressed with LSVT big as well as LSVT loud. And then calibration, what I spoke about before, the, the person with Parkinson's disease, um, that difficulty, I'm sorry, 
with being able to kind of feel where their body is in space, that difficulty with being able to feel um, how they're cueing themselves, how they're moving. Um, people with Parkinson's disease really do need daily reminders of how it feels to move big and to talk loud. And we have to, as therapists, make it important to people. So we want to practice things that that patient likes to do or that patient wants to return doing to again. And the functional skill and task-specific practice is crucial. Again, I talk about people who think they're doing a great exercise program and they are from a cardiovascular standpoint, like um, doing intensity training on a bike. It may not be great that, you know, riding the bike doesn't make getting in another bed easier. So it takes care of some things, but not everything. And that's where LSVT Cloud and LSVT Global come into because it's not only the exercises, it's also the functional training that people get. And again, I mentioned this before, but those daily exercises and activities are challenge for everyone. People can be feel self-conscious about how they look or how they sound. Some people don't have a good support system, um, people to kind of help them get to where they need to go and to help motivate them. Um, the inability for people um, to get where they need to go if they're not driving any longer. Um, weather can be an issue if you live in some place that gets lots of snow and lots of rain. People come um, at exercise and therapy with different levels of knowledge and experience with exercise. I have people who have told me, I hate exercise, I never exercise, I don't wanna exercise. Um, and the beautiful thing about with me doing LSVT Big is it's not just about the exercise. It's really about uh, the functionality of the program. Fatigue is a huge problem in the uh, population of people with Parkinson's disease. And we actually know, and it kind of makes um, not a lot of sense to people, that you actually should be exercising when you are tired um, to help you kind of override that. And people have different beliefs and goals and fears that we as therapists need to be very cognizant of. And we have to think about time. So if it's someone who is still working a full-time job, perhaps caring for children, caring for their parents, caring for neighbors, and even people who are retired who are very busy with traveling um, and taking care of grandchildren, um, we as therapists really need to do a good job of, of helping people to create that, that spot in their calendar so that they're able to take care of themselves. So we can really help people overcome these barriers. And by providing people with Parkinson's disease long-term support, we can really help them to maintain those goals and really reinforce what they've learned. Um, so we as the therapists support people with Parkinson's disease, but we also at LSVT Global provide support to the LSVT Big Certified Clinicians. So that means that we can help to train you and give you information and resources on how to really run a maintenance class that is successful and is really of high quality so that people see the benefit and enjoy coming to your class. And it helps to promote um, continued referrals with keeping people in the system. And then also with teaching clinicians, um, you know, to understand and to assure them that really this fidelity of what you have spent time in learning in getting LSVT Loud and LSVT Big Certified you know, the fidelity of those exercises are really being maintained in these loud for life and big for life classes because we just want to keep the beauty of what people have gained going on. So I'm going to hand it over to Angela here and she's going to talk a little bit more about exercise motivators and then really get into the heart of what both LSVT big for life and loud for life classes contain. Thank you, Heather, for that great introduction and explanation. Um, I was going to, it looks like slide 13 with the description of the LSBT big exercises got skipped over. I didn't know if you wanted to touch on that really briefly before I dig into my section. Thank you, Angela. I thought it was odd that I was only talking about loud and didn't see big. <laughs> Push the button quickly. So let's just take a quick moment. I'm going to test great. that here. Thank you for that. Sure make sure we even have it. There it is, it did go by. So this was where I was talking about the LSVT Loud treatment session summary, and this is LSVT Big. So much like LSVT Loud, we go through a core um, bunch of what we call our daily maximal exercises. And these are exercises that are meant to help with balance, with strengthening, with flexibility, um, reaction time. And we kind of look at them as our are stepping stones into better movement. So again, we adapt these as people need. Some people may do them seated, some people might do them standing. We even use them for people who have to be in bed to do the exercises. We have the functional component tasks, which are similar to the functional phrases that I spoke about before, where I might say, did you walk the dog? Did you take out the garbage? 
Um, we in LSVT Big have the functional component tasks of things that you're already doing every day that we're gonna give you extra chances to do. So one of them is sit to stand. People get up and down multiple times a day. And then you will help the therapist to choose the other one. So it may be you're starting to notice that you're having a little more trouble with pulling your keys out of your pocket, using your cell phone. Um, I have a gentleman now who we're working on getting the wallet in and out of the back um, of his pants. And I have another gal who she has a giant purse and everything falls to the bottom of her purse and she's really struggling to pull out her wallet. So we do that. They are things that you're already naturally normally doing throughout the day, but we teach you how to do them in a much bigger um, more effortful way. We always add in big walking and if we're working with someone who is what we call non-ambulatory is not walking, um, we may be working on how they propel the wheelchair or how someone uses a wheelchair or a power chair um, using the electric joystick, things like that. But when we're talking about the actual walking, we're walking on different surfaces, we're going inside, we're going outside, up and down stairs, ramps and curbs. So anything that the person with PD would be working on um, in the outside world, we're going to take care of in therapy. And then we go into those hierarchy exercises. And again, much like with the LSVT Loud, we start simple and we build it up higher. So, you know, if someone's goal is to be able to get back out there on the golf course. We don't take them to the golf course day one. We talk about well, what are kind of um, the straws that broke the camel's back. Is it um, being able to stand tall? Is it the swing? Is it the walking onto the green? Is it the getting in and out of the golf cart? Um, and we really focus on those tasks first and then build up to finally doing the full program. Again, we give you homework in LSVT Big, just like LSVT Loud, and then we give you those carryover assignments. So asking you to do these bigger movements outside of life. Um, one of the things that I just had a client that I was working with this morning, I said that she was going to, um, instead of having her husband open the door for her, because they were going out shopping today, that she was gonna be the one who was making big movements to open up the door for him, so she could show off how much better she was doing and how she was able to do that with those bigger movements. So that is the summary of our full LSVT big treatment session. And let me take you back to where Angela is going to go. Wonderful, thank you. So Heather had um, presented a really nice overview of here's why we need to exercise. Here's the importance of continued exercise. But yes, there are challenges for all of us when we're exercising. So when we look towards what's important for motivators for continued practice, we see across multiple studies, some of these common themes of motivators for exercise. It's important for us as therapists and leaders of these um, maintenance classes we'll be talking about in just a bit, to really be aware of these motivators so that they can be incorporated into our classes, into our treatment, into our trainings. We see that activities need to have a purpose and they need to have meaning. So if you are gonna participate in exercise, you wanna see the purpose, you wanna see the meaning behind why you're doing that, and then what is the impact on your daily life? That's when it becomes more motivating to continue to do. Programs need to foster success, which in turn empowers people and promotes self-efficacy. We see following LSVT Loud and Big Therapy programs that people do get this empowerment, which then leads to enhanced self-efficacy. And people with Parkinson's who have a higher self-efficacy self are two times more likely to exercise than those with the lower self-efficacy. So self-efficacy plays a big role. Social engagement, people, if you're doing some sort of exercise, you like that interaction with other people and having instructors that are motivating and fun. So these are all things we wanna keep in mind about components that would help to motivate continued exercise practice. Next slide. We also recognize that we're all motivated by different things. So. When we work with our clients, Heather and I will tap into what is most motivating for them for continued practice. So perhaps it's a client would say to Heather, you know, it really helps when I see how you do a movement, that's gonna help me to continue to practice. So Heather could videotape herself doing the LSVT big exercises and the person could take that home. For LSVT loud, sometimes people will say, Oh, if I hear your voice and how to do a particular exercise, that helps me remember so I can make an audio tape for them. 
certainly we can make think loud and think big signs to send home. Uh, we do have some home practice videos that go through the LSVT loud and LSVT big exercises, kind of the Jane Fonda of LSVT big. Um, we have the LSVT companion, which is a software system that can be personalized for people who have gone through LSVT loud and provides very specific feedback on goals. And we have whole other webinars on that if that's something people are interested in. And then more specifically, our topic for today, next slide please, are these loud for life and big for life classes. So what is loud for life and big for life? These are group exercise classes for maintenance of the LSVT loud and LSVT big treatment effects. So they're specifically for people who have graduated from or completed the full LSVT loud or LSVT big protocol. So the idea is people know how to do the exercises and they know how to do them correctly. And then this serves as a means of motivation for continued practice. Next slide. So these Loud for Life and Big for Life classes are typically community-based, so held in different areas around the community, and they are led by LSVT Big and LSVT Loud certified therapists. But when these therapists are leading the class, they're leading it in the role of a fitness professional instead of a therapist, and we'll talk about that in just a bit more. These classes are most typically cash-based. Um, we recently did a poll for Loud for Life and Big for Life class leaders to see what the typical cost of classes were nationally and internationally. And it seems like most people are reporting their classes are in the $1 to $10 range, where also a lot of people are actually offering the classes at no cost. I am in the Denver, Colorado area, and my class, my Loud for Life class, is a part of Parkinson's Association of the Rockies, and they offer it just like they offer all of their other classes, such as Tai Chi, yoga, things like that, at no cost. Um, and then people, if they want to do a pay it forward method later, they can. So there's many different models um, with that, but those are what's most typically reported. Next slide. So Loud for Life and Big for Life classes are not skilled therapy. Heather did a beautiful job of explaining to you what is done in skilled therapy in the LSVT Loud, intensive one month of one-on-one -on -one individual therapy, LSVT Big, intensive month of one-on-one -on -one individual physical therapy. So that's the skilled therapy. You learn the skills, then can go to these maintenance classes. So because it's not skilled therapy, these also are not billed to insurance as some type of group therapy. Once again, it's, it's a maintenance exercise class, just like someone might go to Tai Chi or Silver Sneakers or something like that. These classes are not intended for people who have not yet received LSVT Loud or LSVT Big because, as I mentioned earlier, it's a practice of maintenance of the um, skills that people have already learned. So people aren't um, being taught the skills in the class. It's just a maintenance practice class for those skills that have already been learned. And Heather did a beautiful job of explaining the LSVT model in relation to the dental model. So you see this is an adjunct but not a replacement for those therapies that are essential for that initial restoration of function. Next slide, please. What happens in a Loud for Life class? We'll start with this first. The classes um, that I lead in the model that we teach, first people come and they check in. We do, we do that continued um, motivation for home practice. So I actually do home practice competitions and I'll talk about that in a bit more, but they turn in their home practice form and then I assign new home practice based on their goals. And then the first part of the class, we're doing those daily exercises that Heather already in introduced you to that are a part of LSVT Lab. And an important thing that I always try to follow up with people in my class is the purpose of why we're doing these. We're not just doing ah, uh, ah, uh, over and over, but the idea is the ah uh, is a stepping stone into building a strong voice for conversational speech. 
for the highs and lows, we're always starting with that strong awe voice and going high or starting with the strong awe voice and going low. And the purpose of those is in Parkinson's, people's voices can become monotone. So it's not a singing exercise, but rather we're working on getting more inflection into speech. And then reviewing the point of those functional phrases that it's their hook or their cue to using their loud voice outside of the treatment room. So it's important that people always see the purpose and the meaning behind these exercises and then how to take them into daily life and function. We'll do certain types of readings that people enjoy together in our loud voices. And my group has created certain catchphrases such as, if you don't feel like you're too loud, you're not loud enough. And we all practice those together in our loud voices. And then, as I always explain to people in my class, we don't just talk in isolation. We speak and we have to think about what we wanna say. We talk as we're moving. So during these daily exercises, we'll do dual tasking. We'll add certain arm movements, leg movements, sitting, standing, walking, um, coming up with different snapping, clapping sequences to also pull on the um, memory a bit. We might add some cognitive tasks. So if it's getting close to summertime, while you do that awe, I want you to think of as many things that you can grill as possible. And then everyone has to keep their voice loud while their brain is distracted doing other things. Next slide. Then the second half of the class, we are incorporating working on communication and conversation on activities that are important to the people in my class. So I always am tapping into where are you having difficulties with communication? What would you like to work on? And it's essential, just like in treatment, that these activities are salient, they're personal to the people in the class because that's what's gonna have the biggest impact outside of the class. And as Heather introduced, that's important in treatments. Also with these classes, we want to keep up that intensive practice, keep that motor stimulation going. So any type of activity that I organize, I try to think about how can I keep the most people talking um, most of the time to keep that motor practice going. And then we're also still always focused on that calibration, always reinforcing, yes, that was a beautiful voice. See, everyone in the class could hear you. That's the voice that you want to use all the time. So in my class, um, people frequently say, you know, I do pretty well in conversation situations when it's just one on one and I know what the conversation is going to be. But when it's a little more unstructured or it's in a noisy environment and I don't know what to expect, it's hard for me to remember to use my loud voice. So we might do things such as impromptu speeches that you can get off of Toastmaster websites and they have one minute to stand up and do a speech and maybe we'll play background music or other people will be talking. We have done murder mystery parties where everyone gets a plot and they have to use their loud voice to solve the murder mystery. We do book reviews, we do plays. You can see here the woman with the helmet, she was acting out the part in a play. And then as I mentioned, we do that continued home practice. So keeping those gold level um, practice competitions where people get prizes if they reach the gold level, just like you might if you go to a gym of practicing a certain amount of time. Next slide, please. When you look at feedback, this is where it goes back to what are those motivators? How are people going to continue to practice? And what we see is those things that we um, introduced from the research studies are in fact important when we survey people in the Loud for Life class. In the blue on the pie chart here, you can see that they found the most helpful was interaction with other people with Parkinson's. People say in my class that it's so motivating to be in a class full of people who understand what it's like to have Parkinson's disease. And in the, class, in the instance of Loud for Life, they'll say, it's, it's refreshing that someone understands when I feel like I'm shouting that everyone else is telling me my voice is normal and, and other people have experienced that. And then as therapists, the goal is that people continue to practice, that this is motivating for that. And you can see from this blue box here that 100% of participants reported that um, when they don't go to class, it's harder to remember to practice than when they do. Next slide. 
So what happens in Big for Life? So similar to Loud for Life, part of the session is focused on doing those maximal daily exercises. And these are the exercises that Heather introduced to you with this idea of helping people get that continued motivation to do these exercises and see that impact on their everyday function. Following LSVT Big, these need to be practiced daily, so the class provides that great environment for renewed motivation for these. And then practicing the function-focused exercises and also the big walking. And so throughout this, the Big for Life class leader can be reinforcing, yes, when you do that big movement, see how that helps you to open that door better. See how that's going to help you to swing that golf club better. Whatever the, the functional tasks are for that person, that they want to do that increased amplitude of movement into those tasks. Next slide, please. And the exercises also in Big for Life are meant to be fun and functional. So thinking back again to that diagram we had of the motivators for exercise. You want this to um, have purpose and meaning into the daily life and be fun and translate over into function. So in a Big for Life class, music might be added, maybe asking the group members um, what kind of music they want for that week. And just like I introduced for Loud for Life, always reinforcing why exercises are, be done, are being done. It's not just repetition for the sake of repetition. Same thing in Big for Life, reinforcing the why, why are we doing these and how is that helping you? Making the activities salient to the group members. What are you having difficulties working on? Let's incorporate those tasks into what the group wants to work on today. You know, maybe it's people talking about it's difficult to um, navigate steps. So that can be a focus function task for the group for the day. Walking um, can be done together or perhaps in separate groups, depending on um, speed or um, the, the particular abilities of people in the group. And doing that dual tasking, just like I had um, given the examples for Loud for Life and Big for Life, adding challenges with movement together that might be brain games or adding extra tasks while always remembering that core idea of you have to keep it big while you're doing these other things at the same time. Next slide. We recently did a survey of Big for Life and Loud for Life class leaders nationally and internationally um, and asked them some specific questions. We're just going to show you a few slides with results from that survey. So one of the questions was beyond maintenance, have you observed other ways in which the Big or Loud for Life class has benefited your class attendees? And as you can see here, Opportunities for positive social interaction was very highly reported from class leaders as being an additional benefit that they saw. So the um, B and the four and the L is big for life and the L for L loud for life. You can see those percentages. Increased motivation and adherence to home exercise programs. So the goal, we want people to be practicing more. Reduced depression and or anxiety. Um, so a lot of the leaders reported that they were seeing some benefits there. And then that improved adherence to recommended tune-up schedules. So that dental model that Heather introduced you to of uh, doing the treatment first, then the daily practice, then doing tune-ups, that people are more likely to follow through on those tune-ups. And here's a couple of quotes from the class leaders. This program has facilitated wonderful relationships, laughter, and improved social engagement. And people really enjoy doing this program. Classes are a big motivator for patients. Next slide, please. And then additionally, asked when the class leaders were asked the question, how beneficial do you think your Big for Life or Loud for Life class has been for maintenance? You can see that with 10 being most beneficial, we had a nice progression across that scale being at the upper end of um, almost eight for Big for Life and a little over eight for Loud for Life. So meeting those targets of what these classes are intended to do. Next slide, please. When we think about Loud for Life and Big for Life goals, those primary goals are that support of the continued regular practice of LSVT Loud and LSVT Big exercises 
with this carryover to everyday life of big movements and louder voice, we want to get that enhanced motivation to help people exercise in a fun way so they can continue to be successful. And then secondary goals, providing those opportunities for social interaction and support, reducing care partner burden. So it takes it off the care partner of reminding to exercise or, and gives them a little bit of a break. Promoting that general wellness and reduced overall um, health care cost if people continue to practice, continue to maintain function, continue to have better health. Um, to you know, hopefully reduce those falls, um, have more functional communication to meet their needs, and providing those opportunities for peer interaction. Big for Life and Loud for Life do not replace the need for LSVT Big and LSVT Loud treatment, daily home practice, or tune-ups. Next slide, please. So don't just make sure you are fit, make sure you are fit and continue to move and speak with more normal amplitude in your daily life. Next slide. So if you um, are, have not participated in LSVT Loud and LSVT Big before, which it seemed like a large uh, majority of people responding to the poll had not, here's some information, and this is also in your handout, of how to locate a certified clinician near you. So for those of you who might be interested in participating in LSVT Loud or LSVT Big Therapy, a therapist delivering that has already gone through a two-day training and certification course to make sure that they can deliver the treatment as it's been researched over the many, many years. And so on our website, this gives you information on how you can find someone near you by entering your zip code and see who might be close to you. Then when you see those therapists near you, if they have additionally um, taken a course to learn how to lead a Loud for Life or Big for Life class, that will also come up under their name. And so you can also see if they offer those classes as well. Next slide. This gives you some um, information on if you're a therapist attending this and how you can become certified in leading a class. And so first is you would, if you're not already LSVT Loud or LSVT Big certified, you'd wanna do that first because obviously leading a Loud for Life or Big for Life class builds on the skills you learn and how to actually do the treatment. So there's information on our website about how to do training and certification and you can do that at a live course or online. Um, if you are already LSVT Loud or LSVT Big certified and you want to lead a Loud for Life or Big for Life class, we have this additional, these additional training classes for you. And this slide gives you information on how to do this. The class is really designed to help you. Um, I know for years I've had LSVT Loud therapists tell me, yes, it would be great to lead these classes, but I don't have time to figure out how to implement it. Well, that's the purpose of this additional training class. We give you, here's step one, here's all the forms you need, here's step two, here's how you implement, here's all the class activities. So it's meant to really make that an efficient way for you to get going. Next slide, please. Here's some information on upcoming webinars and events that we have that you might find interesting. And all of our webinars and events are always listed on our website. So we do these public webinars and all of our webinars are recorded so people can listen to them later. Um, we also, when we're doing LSVT Loud or LSVT Big training and certification courses for therapists, on day two of that course, we also offer a two-hour educational event for people with Parkinson's disease and their caregivers. And you can see the one coming up in Cherry Hill, New Jersey here. Um, and so what this is, is a one-hour more intensive review of what the therapies are. And then you're invited, if you so choose, to stay after to do some hands-on practice with the therapists who have been there and get a taste of the therapies. Next slide, please. So in summary, LSVT Loud and LSVT Big are intensive amplitude-based therapy programs aimed at improving this sensory calibration. So helping people to take bigger movements, a louder voice, 
and be able to generalize it in their everyday life. And then once these therapies are completed, it's important to do daily practice and Loud for Life and Big for Life are options to help you with this. Next slide, please. So now I'm gonna turn it back over to Heather to open it up for some questions. Great, thank you so much, Angela. I hope everyone really enjoyed that. Angela did a wonderful job of really kind of explaining um, the benefits of staying active in both the LSVT Big and LSVT Loud classes, how much fun we have, um, how much of an enjoyment it is, not only for uh, the group leaders, but also for the people who are attending. So what I wanna let you know now is, is we are gonna take some time for some questions and answers. If we run out of time or you think of a question later, you can always email us at info at lsvtglobal.com. Or if you'd rather do the, right now and you have a question that you're just burning to get out, I would love for people to go ahead and take a moment and type something into the question panel there. Um, right now, I don't have any questions listed, so I'm gonna give you just a moment. Um, if you do have a question, go ahead and put it in there. Myself or Angela will take a moment to answer it. I know that we are now right on the hour and I don't wanna keep people too long, so go ahead and type in a last minute question if you have one. And like I said, if you think of it later, we're happy to go ahead and reach out to you online. So it's looking like no one is giving us any questions, Angela, so we, wait a minute, there we go, thank you. All right, let me pull up this. Um, the question is, how often do you offer the Loud for Life or the Big for Life classes? Um, I can tell you right now, personally, in our clinic, we only offer them one time a week. I'd love to increase that, um, but starting off, it's just once a week. Angela, how often do you offer your Loud for Life classes? Mine is once a week, and in that survey I mentioned earlier where we polled leaders across the country, it seemed that once a week was the most typical frequency for the classes. Okay, great, thank you so much for your question. i uh, give you one more moment, anybody else popping up here? Nope, all right, I think we did a smashing job, Angela, and we were able to answer all their questions. I hope this has inspired some of you who are LSVT Loud and LSVT Big clinicians to go out there and get certified in Loud for Life or Big for Life. And if you are someone living with Parkinson's or know someone who is, we hope that you will um, put together a plan to get those people into therapy. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for coming out. And again, if you are a clinician and you'd like to get a CEU certification um, pamphlet, please go ahead and email at info at lsvtglobal.com. This webinar will be recorded. So please, if you wanna have someone else go ahead and join in on this, go ahead and let them know about it. I thank my co-presenter and I thank you again. Take care and we will hear you at the next webinar. Thank you.